Welcome to the March to a Million podcast with Greg DuPont, founder of the Wealth Solutions Network. In this podcast, Greg shares his journey to positively impact one million lives by creating an army of financially minded attorneys who embrace an expanded role in their clients' lives. Greg and his guests challenge the status quo in the legal profession and the financial services industry and show attorneys how they can improve their lives, provide greater value to their clients, and experience greater professional satisfaction. Join us in this movement and strengthen your business by learning how to solve your clients' most pressing financial problems. Hello and welcome to another March to a Million podcast with your host, Greg DuPont. Today, we have <laughs> the founder of the Shred Method. I'm really excited about sitting here and listening to this because listen to what we're going to be talking about today actually has to do with the majority of the population and how making some adjustments to some aspects of your financial life can make a humongous difference long term and also hopefully help you with some debt. So with that, Greg, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you. Thank you, Matt. Thank you for the introduction. And thank you for the energy. Uh, you always bring me up to your level and that helps us with this podcast. So, but I didn't need any energy boost today because I'm so excited to be able to share with the audience here uh, a conversation uh, here with Adam Carroll uh, of the Shred Method. Now, Adam and I have just been doing a, a deep dive as part of our, our trainings for WSN, but this message is so important uh, that I wanted to get him on this podcast so we can share it with our WSN members. I'm also going to share this on my consumer podcast, uh, Your Financial Advocate, because this information is critical for so many people that you're seeing on a day-to-day -day basis, that I see on a day-to-day -day basis. And let's just start with this. How many people do you see day in, day out that have a mortgage, that think that, oh, I've got a 3% or 3.5 or whatever number they want to throw out mortgage. This is cheap money. It's okay. I don't need to worry about this. I don't need to pay it off. Well, maybe they've also got a car. Maybe they got a couple of things. So that's what our cash flow conversation is in regarding our training. But today, we're going to specifically talk about how, through using the tool that is the Shred Method, we can get consumers out of mortgage debt as Adam will share with you, I believe he says the typical consumer can be out of their mortgage debt in three to seven years. And no, they are not doing the beanie weenies and rice, sell everything uh, and live like a pauper that certain quote unquote experts uh, advocate. So Adam, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to join with me today and to share this message. Oh, it's my pleasure, Greg. Thanks for the wonderful tee up to you and Matt too. This is, um, it's going to be a fun discussion no matter where it goes. So Adam, what is the shred method? The shred method is a, uh, to, to use my marketing speak here, Greg, it's a unique cash flow tool that is available to the majority of consumers out there, uh, somewhat unbeknownst to them that will help them achieve debt freedom within three to seven years. And my qualifier here is the average client we work with, Greg, will be completely debt-free mortgage included in 4.2 years if they follow our system. 4.2. Yep. It's, it's like you've got a number. You've got statistics to back this up. It's not bullshit. It's not bullshit. It, this, you know, it's funny. People will say it's magic. It's a magic pill. This is a you know, some some sorcery that's going on here. And we like to say it's not magic, it's math. And this is a, a mathematical algorithmic equation that we've created in software form that will show you what to do with that discretionary income, the, the extra amount that you have sitting on the sidelines uh, at the end of every month to use in the most efficient manner possible to help you build wealth and create freedom and flexibility for your family. Okay, so we got the teaser out there, 4.2 years. Yeah. How, how how does this work? What's the consumer have to do to get out of mortgage debt in 4.2 years? Yeah, well, there's there's a couple of key principles to this working, Greg, and it's it's always good, I think, to lay the foundation so people understand who this is for and who this isn't for. This is for people who uh, are are relatively disciplined in their finances to the extent that they have more money at the end of their month, not more month at the end of their money, right? So we have to have some discretionary money left over at the end of the month that 
we're deciding what to do with. And for most people, that means it's going into savings. It could be going to investing, but for most of us, it goes to Costco and Target and dining out, right? I mean, it just, it, it goes up in smoke at some level. And so what we're doing is we're showing what to do with that extra to make it the most efficient use of that money possible. And the way I like to, to uh, describe this, Greg, so that people get a visual on it, is if I asked you, um, hey, I think your car is running in your in your driveway right now, what would you do? Uh, I, I would go in, well, today I'd leave it running to thaw out so we can get out of the snow. <laughs> yeah. But uh, generally speaking, I would uh, turn it off. Yeah, and why would you turn it off? Because I don't want to waste gas. Right. I don't have it stolen. Yeah, it, it's it wastes gas. It's inefficient, hard on the environment, hard on the engine. Someone might take your car. In essence, it's inefficient. It's an inefficient use of our vehicle. And yet what most of us do with our paychecks is we let our money idle in the driveway and we let it idle there for days or weeks or months on end quite often because it just makes us feel good to have this high balance in our checking account or our savings account. But in reality, what we're not paying attention to is the interest expense on the debt that we have. And we would call that amortized interest on a mortgage, could be a car loan, could be a student loan. Um, but it's this unforeseen kind of hole in our boat, if you will, that most people are just like, yeah, it's just interest. I pay interest every year. But when we really get down to the nuts and bolts of it, we're talking about for most people, 20, 30, $40,000 a year in interest that's going out the door to finance their home, their vehicle, their business, et cetera. When if we're keeping some amount on the sidelines, uh, you know, in, inefficiently, and we put that to work for us, we can claw back some of those twenty or thirty thousand dollars a year in interest and keep it for ourselves for our own wealth building opportunity, as opposed to paying our bankers Lexus payment. So, how do we use our money more effectively? Well, part of the key is you know knowing the tools that you're using to to make the shred method effective, and what that entails is a, a tool, a financial tool that is widely available to virtually everyone out there. And it's either a home equity line of credit, it could be a business line of credit, or it could be a personal line of credit. But essentially it's it's a, a, a bank of money that we can borrow from and pay back whenever we want. We like to describe it as a two-way street, money goes in and money comes out. And we're effectively leveraging small bursts of money from that line of credit and deploying it against long-term amortized debts like your mortgage, a business loan, et cetera. And when you do this and you do it in short chunks, um, what you're effectively doing is clawing back all those tens and sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars that you would normally pay on your mortgage. And instead you're paying a fraction of that amount in interest on the line of credit because we're only borrowing it for a few days before our income gets deposited right back in there. So when we were recording our, our training the other day, you, you walked through an example that kind of that showed uh, the impact of being able to make a substantial payment on principal early on, yep. uh, and, and how that changes. And we don't have the capacity here on uh, on the podcast. We can do it on the video uh, of showing that. But if you could, if you could just kind of uh, draw a picture, a word picture. Of yeah. what that is, how that works, uh, and the impact of being able to to drop some money systematically yeah. on your principal, and that's and that's the core of the shred method and the tool that you have is is okay. So we got the intention; we could do this. We can pull this money out and drop it in, but having a system to follow to yes. do this regularly and repeatedly—that's where the genius is. Yes, exactly. Um, so to describe what you. Uh, you know, talked about, we did on the training, Greg, the the numbers, if we were to look at the hard numbers, let's say someone bought a $300,000 home and, um, and before payment one, one of the things that we must know is how much of the payments are going towards principal and how much are going towards interest. And so not to assume anything, but you know this, Greg, as well as I do, what percent roughly of your first payment would go to principal versus go to interest? About 1%. <laughs> yeah. 
it seems like it for most people. Um, on average, let's say it's maybe 10 or 12% of your payment would go to principal. The rest, 88%, 90% is going to interest. And this is where people sort of make the mistake of, well, I'm just going to make my regular monthly mortgage payments. I can afford it. I can afford this house and this payment. And they'll do that dutifully for the next two, three, four, five years, make their minimum payment and assume five, five and a half, six years down the road when they go to sell that property, I'm going to have this huge chunk of money coming back to me because I've been paying on it for six years. When in reality, what you've been paying is a significant amount of interest and very little principal. So what we're doing with the shred method is we're, we're, we're almost flip-flopping the amortization table where we're going to pay more principal up front and thereby reduce or almost eliminate the amount of interest that we're paying on that debt over the course of time and thereby paying it off in three to seven years. The real numbers look like this, Greg. If you have a $300,000 mortgage and you dropped a one-time $5,000 lump sum payment on that mortgage in the first, let's call it two months of having the loan itself. What you would do is you would advance the amortization table by about 21 months. Almost two years of payments are avoided by dropping five grand one time onto the principal balance of your mortgage. And so if we're doing the math on the, on the payments, what that amounts to is somewhere between 30 and $35,000 in interest that you would avoid paying by dropping one $5,000 lump sum payment on your mortgage early on. And with the shred method, what, what our software is teaching you to do is you're going to do this sequentially, you know, month after month, maybe every six weeks, every five weeks, it's going to happen. You're going to drop these lump sum payments against your mortgage. In some cases, it may be every two weeks or sooner. And as you do this, you will slowly and actually relatively quickly start to see your the balance on your mortgage come down, more and more of your payment go to principal every single month, and you'll start to feel like I'm actually getting ahead of the game. I'm not I'm not just pouring this money into an empty bucket or a bucket with a hole in the bottom. I'm starting to fill this thing up and creating more and more equity, which we would translate to net worth and liquidity. And we're doing that in short order. So as, as I understand it, um, you know, you, you, you've got a, a bucket of money uh, yep. that, um, that you're going to use to leverage to take that $5,000 and put it against the principal. Yep. And that bucket of money can be uh, a home equity line, which is one of the more efficient tools to do it. It can be a, a savings account. It can be a, a business line, whatever, those other yep. categories that you've talked about before. Yep. But for most people that do the shred, it ends up being this home equity bucket. Uh, and so that obviously opens the, the question a lot of people have is, oh, well, wait, wait, this this is counterintuitive. You're, you're telling me that I need to take on more debt uh, through a home yep. equity line uh, so I can pay off this. Well, why, what what makes, it doesn't make sense for me to take, yeah, thirty thousand dollar home equity loan uh, and pay thirty thousand against my mortgage because I still owe the same amount against my house. Right. So uh, let's walk through that and how in the fallacy of that. Yep. So the the key is, and without getting too very technical, because we we throw around words like amortization or compound interest, and people, uh, you know, their eyes glaze over. But a, a a HELOC, for all intents and purposes, is a simple interest vehicle. You pay interest based on what you owe, but you pay it based on the average daily balance. So on a 30-day period, the, the balance may go up if we borrow against it, but it goes down as soon as your income goes in. So it's a very unique tool in that we're going to pay the average daily balance on that, uh, on that interest or on that borrowed amount. And our software is engineered so that we're keeping that balance as low as humanly possible throughout the month. Right. So you may borrow money off on the HELOC to apply towards your mortgage, but you may only borrow it for two or three days, maybe five days, seven days tops. And, and by that point in time, then your paycheck gets dropped in and it lowers the balance. And a good visual, a metaphor for this, Greg, is when you make your house payment, let's say we're filling this, this gigantic hole in uh, that represents our house payment. You're going to take a shovel over here from your income, but by the time you go to dump it in your house payment, it's a teaspoon because of all the interest that that 
you know, is, is charged against that. So we're, we're, we may be pulling a shovel over here, but we're only getting a teaspoon over here. With a HELOC, what we're doing is we're taking the same shovel and we're filling it in with a shovel, but it only costs us a teaspoon in order to do that because we're borrowing it at such a short burst of time and a significantly smaller amount. So someone would say, yeah, but my HELOC's at 8%. My mortgage is at four. That doesn't make sense. The reality of the number is $300,000 at 4% creates a much, much larger number than maybe five or $8,000 at 8% for a week, right? And that's where, that's where it takes a minute for our minds to catch up on how this works. Mm -hmm. But make no mistake, banks understand this unquestionably. Like this is their business model. They understand how to loan money at a significant length with a, even a small amount of interest, but they're going to make a ton of, of interest over time because the payments are all amortized over that 30 year period where the majority of the interest is paid up front, very, you know, significantly less principal paid until the back end. Yeah. Now, when we talked about this the other day and I'm recording the, the conversation for the training, um, we you kind of broke it down into uh, basically three different uh, pools of, of prospect, as it were. So what I'd like to do with WSN here is is break this down into facts that people can recognize as, as easily as possible, just yeah. so they now know that they've got a solution that we can direct people to. Uh, so when is this most effective? When is this maybe not effective? When we're talking to people that we're having an estate planning conversation, they say, hey, uh, I've got this mortgage. Yep. Yeah, it's great for, and, and I'll give kind of the qualifiers on people that when we engage with them um, as a prospect, uh, you know, we do a discovery call, we get all their particulars, and our team of coaches would say, that's a great prospect. They would make a great shredder. Those people generally are disciplined. So they, they understand that um, they're probably not going and spending more than they make on a monthly basis. They're, they're disciplined about spending less than they make. So on an average basis, if someone's making 10 grand a month and they're spending eight great prospect for us, because one of the things we know about that demographic is they are consciously thinking, what do I do with the extra two grand to make sure that I'm setting myself for setting myself up for financial success down the road? Um, the second qualifier that we're looking at is, and this is kind of a broad brush stroke, but do they have kids and do they have kids that are relatively young? Like they could be elementary or middle school age kids. And one of their concerns is how am I going to pay for college? How am I ever going to pay for, uh, you know, the vehicles, the braces, uh, the, the family trips down the road. We love working with those folks because we can show them listen, in two years, this becomes a non-issue, you know, spend 18 to 24 months with us and you'll realize all of those things are possible. Stroke a check for braces, stroke a check for family vacations, et cetera. Um, the third qualifier we're looking for, Greg, is we really like to have folks who have fairly consistent, predictable income. So if you're getting paid every two weeks and it's not super up and down, I mean, there can be some variability in income like bonuses, but if you are a W-2 wage earner or you're a business owner and you're just used to paying yourself a certain draw, that's a really good client for us because we can show you just by using the income that you have coming in the household, but reorienting it through our cash flow tool and model, um, you're going to see a massive difference in how much you owe, how much the payments are every month, and how quickly your net worth is growing um, as you see your equity increase. And then the next step in our process is how do we start to shift some of that equity into investments and do that in mass scale? So, you know, generally speaking, we want to work with folks who are future oriented. They're speaking about things like generational wealth and how do I make sure that I'm leaving something to my kids and grandkids? And they may be somewhat concerned about what does retirement look like and how will I ever be able to afford it? Um, the reason that this is a qualifier is our goal using Shred is to minimize their monthly expense profile. So if you've got a you know late 40s, early 50s, early 60s uh, client, and they're somewhat concerned about, am I going to have enough 
to last me into retirement, but they're still working, we can show them how in the next three to four years, you could be mortgage free, or at the very least minimize your mortgage payment to the ridiculous, where you know you've got enough money you know, on the sidelines or in investments that will allow you to survive forever. You know, I want to underscore something that you just said. Uh, yeah. and this is for for the the WSN or the, the, anybody listening, because um, the the process that you've got. The, I don't do the, the I don't do the processing. The the financial advisors don't do the processing. You and your team do all of the assessment and set everything up. Yep. And we got a link in the show notes below uh, to be able to get to the shred. Uh, but all all we need to do is point this out to a client saying, hey, this is something that you should consider. And then if I understand correctly, Adam, all they got to do is click the link. They'll they'll be able, then take your team will, will take over from there. Uh, and walk them through an assessment of their whether or not this will work for them. Am I correct on that? You are absolutely correct. Um, what we find is that we want to make this as simple as possible. And that first conversation with our coaches is really about, you know, creating some vision for them about what's possible. And to be quite candid, Greg, when we when we work with individuals and we show them, the dashboard that says you have 3.7 years and you'll be completely debt free, or you have 4.3 years, you'll be completely debt free. You know, people get lit up about that because for, for many, they feel like there's some hopelessness there. Like I'm never going to get out of this, or I'm always going to have this mortgage. I'm always going to have this car loan or this student loan. And then we show them, no, 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 you don't have to change much of anything other than the way the money is oriented through your household. And this is the kind of result you're going to have. Um, and then we show them what's possible further down the road, 10 years, 15 years out, where they flip this thing from a debt reducer to an asset builder. And, you know, it's a, we've talked about this before. This is a seven figure difference or multiple seven figure difference for some people where they might hope to have a couple million dollars set aside. And we go, oh, but you could, but if you're using the system and you use it for the next X amount of years, you could have 7 million or 10 million or 12 million, you know, using the exact same numbers that you're making right now and not tweaking your income all that much. Again, it feels like magic, but it really, these are mathematical principles that other industries are using to make money. Um, and, and we're trying to educate consumers that there is a different path to take. Albert Einstein, right? The eighth wonder of the world, compound interest. Those totally. who understand it, earn it. Those who don't, pay it. So I'm going to ask you one question, final question for myself, and then I'm going to ask Matt to join us here because I'd like to bring my fly in the wall back in uh, yeah. to get maybe some fresh perspective on our conversation. You made a, a, a passing comment there about student loans. You know, lots yeah. of attorneys have student loan debt, just like doctors. Yeah. Um, does the shred method work on those type of debts as well? It absolutely does. Um, you know, my my take on student loans is, first of all, this is this is one of the, the the analogy I like to use is this is like having creeping Charlie in your yard. You know, creeping Charlie will take over a, a front yard in no time, and I feel like student loans are the same way. I've gone unchecked. You know, the the interest on interest on interest starts to compound, and you might end school with one amount of money and, and five years later through forbearance and deferments and interest expense additions, it grows to this astronomical number. Um, we love helping borrowers clear out student loans because it feels like this is a thing I'm never going to get rid of. And then you start using shred and you're seeing these lump sums go against the, the student loan debt and eradicate it in no time. Um, the short answer is yes, Greg. The longer answer is you know, our goal is to really help people begin building equity. So if we can go after those student loans headlong and finish them really quick, that's probably one of the first things we're going to do. And then when we start going after the mortgage, you start to see the real value of equity in a property, more liquidity, the ability to do things with that liquidity. Um, so that's, that's really our end goal. So if someone's like, I want to do this and I want to get after it really fast, know that we're probably going to go after your student loans right away. And we may you know, we may get into tackling a mortgage or the car, but we really want to get rid of some of that stuff that's hanging around that's not doing anything to build wealth. It's only an expense in that category. 
Thank you. Matt, uh, what's my fly on the wall got percolating over there? <laughs> Lots of percolation there, my friend. Uh, well, first off, yeah, I mean, the math makes sense, right? So I'm sitting over here with my yellow pad, writing some things down and thinking to myself, okay, so here's what I've got here. Here's what I've got here. You know, yep. wow, if I was able to do that and I don't even have the flipping software and it made sense on the yellow pad, right? Yep. Um, you know, the other thing too, and why I think this is so applicable to a Wealth Solutions Network and this whole idea of, of, of March to a Million it is because the the overall goal is to help people have more and pass on more and yeah. debt is the largest eroding factor of all of that right yeah. so so adam freaking cool man thank you very much for being such a wonderful wonderful guest on the show greg as always you're a freaking rock star thank you for bringing this to your uh your network to make sure that you're able to go ahead and communicate uh really really well with everybody for all of you i will see you guys on the other side of the mic very very soon Thank you for listening to the March to a Million podcast. Click the follow button to be notified when new episodes become available and get in touch with our team by visiting our website at www.wealthsolutionsgroup.biz or give us a call at 614-432-8065. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Wealth Solutions Network. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice from qualified financial service providers with any questions you may have.